the past year since I won the TR35, I've been heavily involved with Thing Magic, the company that we're in right now. The company has grown from about uh, mid-30s of people to now over 60 people. Uh, we're producing and selling products out into the market to address the need and demand for RFID technology. So this is technology where we have embedded uh, chips in uh, either planarized plastic or paper material that get embedded on products. And then we, as a company, make readers which will track those uh, tags as they move through any kind of environment. So I've been heavily involved with that. Um, I'm the CTO of this company, uh, for, uh, focused on looking at the technology, both forward and uh, today. So that's one piece of activity that I've been heavily involved in. The other piece of activity I've been involved in is working with a collaborator and colleague from uh, back from the Media Lab named Ben Vigoda. He and I are working on a book together, uh, which is focusing on the physics of computation. Um, it's sort of a, sort of the more the academic side of the work that I've been interested in. And with that, we've been working on a book together, which we hope to be able to release next year, and we've been able to teach that uh, a class around that at MIT. But right now, the industry is really taking, I'd, I'd consider, baby steps in terms of the development in order to get towards the consumer level. You know, you buy a CD and there's an RFID tag on it. Right now, the supply chain is focusing on managing their own supply chain. So they focus on, as products come into a warehouse, RFID technology is being used to track those products as they come in so that there isn't a, an enormous manual process to be able to track and inventory those products. They're done automatically. So there's a computer network and an RFID network that supports supports this automatic tracking. As I think companies get more comfortable with that technology being used in the supply chain, then I think we'll start to see that move out into the consumer floor so that when you go to a Whole Foods or any kind of store, you can just essentially just walk out with your products. It'll automatically be logged and recorded for you and signed out with your credit card. Yes, innovation is definitely a risky business as I sit in a startup company of about 60 people building towards a market that doesn't exist. We're definitely involved in risk and we hope that one day we'll be able to benefit from uh, the risk and investment that we're putting into that. But it's, yeah, it's definitely a challenge. Um, when we, as I work today or any other day, we're constantly innovating and trying to develop new technologies and some of those technologies, and I've seen this happen already, are going to fail. And if we're not working on things that are failing and succeeding at the same time, then we're not pushing the boundary enough. So I think I think it's really important to have those those failures as well, and you're going to learn from those failures and use them uh, at some later date. I am convinced that anything that doesn't work, even if it's if it seemed like a good idea and it didn't work for some reason, market reason, so on and so forth, it's going to be useful at some time. I'm going to be able to put that technology, that innovation, in my back pocket, and someday be able to pull that out and use it for another purpose.